you. I'm glad you made it, finally. Uh, today's pretty hectic. They've got me doing heart, blood vessels, digestive system. So I'm going to show you the digestive system. So I think in the digestive system, we'll just start at the esophagus and work our way down. We'll finish up with the accessory organs. So this first slide is the esophagus. And if you remember, our esophagus is exposed to uh, abrasion uh, on the inside. So it's got that non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. I'm actually going to zoom out from this far away because what's really cool in this slide is we can see the epithelium on top with its lamina propria and uh, muscularis mucosae. Then we can see the submucosa. Then we can actually see the inner circular layer of smooth muscle and the outer longitudinal layer. I don't see the adventitia here. I guess this one side has a little bit, but it's really cool because from this far away, we can see a whole lot. Oh, and the layer that I have it in right now looks like it's the muscularis mucosae. Yes. Oh. Okay. All right, let's move on. So in the stomach, we're gonna be looking for gastric pits and gastric glands in the epithelium and that are poking down like into the lamina propria and muscularis mucosae. And actually on this section that I have right here, you can see all those layers folding up nicely in the lamina propria right under it. And so one of the things that's easy to recognize about the stomach is that those gastric pits make the tissue look really sharp. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. And where this is folding, this is actually a beautiful section. We can see lamina propria, and we can actually see the inner oblique layer of smooth muscle, all from this one slide. Okay. So then from the stomach, let's go to the small intestine. We're just going to look at small intestine. And the small intestine has a lot of goblet cells. It stains more darkly than the stomach a lot of the time, and it looks a lot more glandular, so it's pretty easy to recognize the difference between the small intestine and the stomach. People, I just have to tell you how cool the small intestine is. You can see it right here in the microscope. What you can see is the pointer is in the folding of the mucosa, those little intestinal villi that are caused because see that red line right under the pointer? That's the muscularis mucosae and it's shorter than this lamina propria. Oh, don't disappear. Shorter than the lamina propria and the epithelium. And so they cinch up. Dang it, Mom, I didn't make it back. To make those folds. The intestinal villi. And then the other big fold that you could see, we'll find it, is a circular fold. And all of those things are visible right here. Man, right there. So the big large fold is the circular fold. And that happens because the muscularis externa down there at the bottom is shorter than the submucosa and the mucosa. And so they cinch up to create those circular folds. So that's one way to increase surface area. And then if you look on top of that, each of those intestinal villi is increasing surface area. And if you zoom in, you would see that each of the columnar cells has microvilli on top to increase surface area. Pretty cool. Now the large intestine is going to be easiest to recognize because it's got a high proportion of goblet cells in the epithelium. And that's because our goblet cells secrete mucus and we need to be able to lubricate the solid waste that's being formed. So that's one of the easiest ways to tell that you're looking at the large intestine is that you've got so many more goblet cells in the epithelial layer. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you that. All right, now as far as our accessory 
glands go. I think we're just going to skip salivary glands and look at our liver and pancreas. They are super cool. So first here's the pancreas. This secretes exocrine and endocrine products. The endocrine products are released by those islet cells and the pancreatic islets or the islets of Langerhans. And the exocrine products, pancreatic juice, is what we care about now. And those are released into little ductules that are going to drain into that main pancreatic duct. That's going to drain into the duodenum of the small intestine. So I'm going to put the pointer in acinar cells that are right next to an eyelid. Now last we'll look at the liver, and I love the liver, I love it all, but I love the liver to look at because we can see those portal triads where you have a branch of your hepatic portal vein bringing in that unfiltered blood from the small intestine, and then you can see the hepatocytes that are going to filter it, you can see a branch of your hepatic artery that's bringing in our nutrient and oxygen rich blood to serve the tissue. And you can see a little bile ductule that takes the wastes away from the liver and concentrates it in bile. Remember, bile salts are going to be really important for the emulsification of fats. So, actually, we need to make some adjustments here so that we can get in and see those triads. And you can see that all of our lobules here in the liver are organized around central veins. I'm going to come out to the outside, though, and find us a portal triad in my dreams. Where is it? I'll just show you up right here. We can see a larger branch of the bile ductules that are going to become the oh, hepatic duct. Oh, they carry bile away to the gallbladder. So there we can see a branch of the hepatic portal vein, a bigger branch of those um, bile ductules, so like where they're coming together and merging. So the bile is going to drain away from those little bile ductules into the right and left hepatic ducts that are going to take that bile to the gallbladder and then the gallbladder has a cystic duct and then from there they all merge to become the common bile duct that enters into the duodenum. So that is the duct that we're looking at there. All right, those are our digestive slides.